It's time now for the political analysis of Fromm and Fuller. Al Fromm, former political advisor to President Bill Clinton, and Craig Fuller, former political advisor to both President Ronald Reagan and George H.W. Bush. Good morning, all, and welcome back. Al, for all we know, the Texas House Democrats might be hiding out in St. Michael's or in your basement in Annapolis as we speak of their organized effort to block the passage of the GOP-backed voting restriction bill in that state. Many see this as a desperation uh, act as Republican-controlled state houses continue to successfully pass new laws that Democrats see as disenfranchising minorities as the country prepares for the midterm elections. Who's going to win this battle in 2022? First, like in most legislatures in Texas, you need a quorum uh, in order to conduct legislative business. But unlike in the U.S. House and U.S. Senate, where a simple majority, uh, which means uh, 218 in the House and 51 in the Senate, constitute a quorum, in Texas, you need two thirds of the members in the House to constitute a quorum. That means if a th uh, basically if a third of the members plus one uh, is not present, you can't conduct legislative business. The Republicans do control both houses in Texas, uh, but they don't come anywhere close to a two thirds majority. So uh, I think the number in Texas is 51. If 51 Democrats don't show up, the House can't conduct business, and that's what's happening. Now, ironically, it's sort of like the filibuster, uh, because it's using a uh, procedure that requires a supermajority to pass legislation. So this is the Texas version uh, of the filibuster. Uh, now, second, how long can the Texas Democrats sustain their objection? This particular set special session called by Governor Abbott will end on July 31st, so they probably can last that out. But the governor has unlimited power to call as many special sessions as he wants. So even though the legislature doesn't really meet again in, in regular session until 2023, my guess is the governor will continue to call special sessions and unless uh, uh, the Texas Democrats want to spend 18 months out of the state, uh, and most of them probably have to work for a living, uh, they uh, eventually they'll get a vote on the bill. Third, what's the fight really about? The fight is about long-term political control of the state of Texas. Texas, like most of the country, is rapidly changing. Uh, Republicans have controlled uh, the Texas statewide and in the legislature dominated really for uh, the last quarter century, but that gr their grip is loosening. Cities uh, like in counties like Harris County, which includes Texas, uh, are rapidly growing. They're very diverse electorates, uh, many more minorities, uh, and they tend to be very democratic, and they're growing. Uh, uh, they're growing rapidly. Uh, the rural Texas, where the Republicans are absolutely dominant, is still very powerful. I mean, uh, Trump won Texas by 600,000 votes last time, even though that's the closest margin in decades. Uh, but their power is slowly declining. And to preserve it, what the uh, uh, <clears throat> Republicans are trying to do is pass legislation that makes that, that will slow the change, making it harder to vote. And they've got a particular focus on Harris County, where Houston is, by focusing on two things that uh, uh, really help increased turnout last time, drive-by drive -by voting in 20, and there were eight poll, polls that were open 24 hours and they won't, will not allow that. They're also limiting the number of drop boxes. So finally, what's gonna happen? I suspect in Texas, eventually the governor will continue to call uh, uh, special sessions and the, and the uh, legislature will finally pass uh, their uh, uh, voter suppression bill. Uh, and uh, but uh, I suspect what's happening in Texas and what's happening around the country, and particularly efforts in some states to give legislatures the power to overturn the outcome of elections, uh, 
will eventually provoke sense into the Democrats. Uh, and I think in the end, they'll come back with a bill sort of like what Joe mentioned, uh, suggested uh, when I talked about last time when we were together that would make uh, uh, voting registration, voting and registration easy, guarantee the security of the votes by some sort of reasonable voter identification, guarantee the integrity of the counting of ballots, block states' uh, efforts to overturn uh, election outcomes and end partisan gerrymandering. And I think for that, they will uh, uh, be able to get an exception to the filibuster uh, in the end, as long as these Republican efforts continue. Uh, and I think they'll pass that bill and under the constitution, uh, the federal law will prevail. Greg, uh, is this strategy going to work for the Republicans? Do you think? You know, I uh, I think my uh, friendly Republicans in Texas are, have a have a whole set of solutions in search of a problem. You know, voter fraud is simply not running amok around the land, and any credible group that's researched this will will tell you that. Yeah. And they may have a a lofty goal that Al suggests to to save the, save the party or save themselves. Um, I, th they seem to think that this issue is going to resonate with the, you know, voters somehow. I actually think it's going to have quite the opposite effect. Uh, I, I see two things happening. First of all, um, either there'll be an, a turnout of voters like they've never seen among those populations that they seek to repress simply to prove the point that they're, you know, take away our drive-by voting, take away our voting boxes, take away uh, or make it more difficult to get mail-in ballots in general. And we'll find other means to do that. And first of all, the I don't think the, the legislation as it now stands, it's been watered down already. I don't know that it's, it's that severe, but it certainly can be overcome by a very active get out the vote effort. And I think that's what you're gonna get as one possibility. There's other possibility, they're not mutually exclusive. That's where Al's going, is that they're going to trigger in Texas, from, because of what Texas is doing, and in other states, they're going to trigger a federal reaction. And there's going to be federal legislation that's going to override all this. And, and, and then Republicans are going to be left uh, either way with uh, taking on initiatives that I just don't think have very broad-based support. And I actually think um, aren't, that, aren't that onerous. Uh, even even if they're ill, Ill considered, uh, but they certainly can be overcome by other means. You know, and the you, you think about Texas. There's an interesting op-ed that appeared recently out of Texas uh, by about by somebody saying, you know, where where are these legislators working on problems like our infrastructure throughout the state? What are they doing about this crazy uh, power grid that we suffer from every time you know there's storms and. Um, to, 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 there are real issues that are going to affect people. And I don't, uh, I just don't believe that in 2022 on election day that uh, this kind of a, an effort is going to be well received or particularly uh, helpful to Republicans. I hope it ends soon, in my view. When you're about to lose power, you try to do everything you can to force your agenda to try to you know, hold on to the last vestiges of, uh, of power. And uh, I think the, the Texas Republicans probably see the handwriting on the wall. And so they're gonna try to pass everything they can uh, and, uh, you know, and hope they can hold on. It is not unlike what we talked about earlier, uh, or, or talked about last year, when uh, uh, you know trying to rush uh, Amy Coney uh, Coney Barrett uh, onto the uh, onto the court, uh, you know it, these are last ditch efforts to maintain uh, a status quo that is rapidly changing. So it does not surprise me that it's happening. Uh, it's not good for the country. And, uh, you know, there may be short-term victories for the Republicans on this, but over the long haul, they are not gonna, you know, stop the change. I mean, if you just look at the progression over the last, uh, you know, this country over its whole history, you know, uh, you have points where, of, of inflection where there are great change. This happens to be one of them. And over the next 20 or 30 years, we're going to become a multicultural, multiracial 
democracy with uh, uh, majority minority uh, of, uh, of, of a majority of minority voters. And it's going to eventually uh, work its way into the system, no matter how hard the, uh, the Republicans try to prevent it. Uh, Craig, you have the last word this week. Well, maybe I will say partially the strategy seems to be a little bit flawed in that and that uh, for 51 Democrats, and I guess there's some state uh, Democratic senators also fleeing the state, is, is uh, not always going to be regarded as a high act of courage or leadership. It definitely gets you on CNN. Um, I don't know how it's going to play out in, in Texas, but um, I, I think I'd prefer that uh, the state legislatures stay home and uh, legislators stay home and uh, and, and, and do their work. They're, they're leaving themselves a little bit vulnerable on that front. But uh, again, I'm not sure that that's going to change the outcome. Greg Fuller, Al Fromm, thank you very much indeed. We will see you next week.